Good afternoon. Welcome to the 2021 AWS Summit in Washington, D.C. We're so glad you're here. My name is Lisa Amatura, and I will be your room host for the day. And I just have a couple of housekeeping items for you. Emergency exits are located behind me. Bathrooms are located off and to the right. And if you haven't done so yet, um, please download the AWS Events app from your app store and share your feedback on the session. We really do value your feedback. Um, this session will be recorded, and for this session, we're going to be talking about meeting the demand with alternative talent pipelines. And I would like to introduce to you Rebecca Allen, who is the Eastern Region uh, Eastern Region for Education to Workforce. That's what she covers, right? And we also have Dr. Linda Calvin. She's the VP of IT for Ivy Tech Community College. So thank you again, and I will turn it over to these ladies. Great. Thank you. Thank you. It is so exciting to be here. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of context for our guest, Dr. Linda Calvin. Um, as the VP of IT um, at Ivy Tech, um, and for those of you who don't know, Ivy Tech is actually the largest singly accredited community college in the country. Um, and what's really interesting is they're the second largest contributor to the workforce in the state of Indiana. So lots of um, really bragging rights there. They're, they're doing a ton when it comes to workforce development. Um, and it's been, it's been an absolute privilege to partner uh, with Dr. Calvin over the last year or so. Um, she, she's been an amazing business partner. Um, I also want to share some of her kind of personal interests. You know, she is incredibly committed to um, this ongoing imperative to really create opportunities in tech, in STEM, for women, for people of color. Um, she's incredibly active on a number of different boards in her area. She serves as a mentor um, for the Starfish Initiative, um, volunteer guardian. Um, as well. So she is just kind of has her hands in everything um, when it comes to IT, when it comes to diversity, when it comes to equity, when it comes to inclusion. So um, we're thrilled to have her here. Thank you. Yes. So this specific conversation, the context for it really comes from something that you know, anyone who is at this conference this week is not going to be a stranger to, and it's just this reality that cloud migrations have been accelerated across the public sector, across the private sector. I'm going to drop a little data on you here. Um, worldwide, end user spend on cloud computing in 2020 was calculated to be about $257 billion. Uh, the projections for what we're going to hit at the end of 2021 um, are that it will be just over $305 billion. So that's up almost 20%. Um, you can check my math, not necessarily my strong suit, but anyway, this impacts everybody. It doesn't matter if you're working in music streaming or if you're working in, you know, for the NFL or if you're working in something maybe a little nerdier. Um, you know, it's, it's every single industry vertical that is impacted. Um, and when you think about kind of all of the cool advancements in AI and IoT and ML, all of this also is driven by the cloud. But we're in this crazy situation that you've probably all read the headlines about which can be summed up as everyone's hiring, nobody's getting hired. Um, and that is what we are here to talk about. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit more data, and then I'm going to open it up um, with some questions for Dr. Calvin. So uh, you know, we know that we're in a situation where we just have this mismatch between what the market demands and the skills that job seekers have. We know this. We have a lot of data to prove it. Um, you know, one recent research study by um, 451 Research showed that 90% of IT decision makers say that there is a cloud skills shortage. So they're struggling to find people with these skills. Um, just kind of anecdotally, I talk to companies every day who are you know, crying tears over having to pass on projects because they can't find the staff to actually deliver those projects. Um, so you know, bottom line is pretty simple in concept, really hard to actually execute on, and that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, but we have to create more people who have these skills and pump them out into the workforce. And, and that's the bottom line. So people like Dr. Calvin and institutions like CUBB colleges and Ivy Tech in particular have a really central role in delivering on this solution. 
So let's talk about that. <laughs> so tell us, how do you see Ivy Tech's role in helping to solve this problem? Well, you know, the role of the community college is to be the demands of the community. And the community involves employers, faith-based um, organizations, community leaders. And so what our role is at Ivy Tech is to meet those demands. We are here to meet the demand of workforce. And so we have to turn out that talent. We must turn out that talent. Um, and create and meet that need for cloud computing, for software developers, for cybersecurity. Our role is to empower economic development, right? And the way that we do that is through talent development. Makes perfect sense. So give us a little bit of the history. How did you get involved with cloud specifically? So we all know that cloud is where it's at, right? And we have those, yeah, here we are. And it's, and it's cloud, right? Um, cloudy forecast isn't necessarily a bad thing, and somebody co-opted me, co-opted that last week when I presented it to town. I said it's a, it's a cloudy, it's a cloudy day, and that's a good thing. Um, but how we got started really was we knew and understood that we must answer this need. So we looked at it to say, what curriculum do we have that we can cloudify? Now there's a difference in that journey, right, between cloudifying and then offering cloud. But so we thought, we're going to take this kind of deliberately so we can meet the need that we have to satisfy with the Commission for Higher Ed, with these other institutions, but faster. And how we do that is by cloudifying curriculum. So we introduced um, what we call Cloud Fundamentals, which we, uh, which we uh, fondly call SVAD 150. Okay, it means nothing to no one but us. But we started there. And then it was, okay, let's lean in and understand what other community colleges are doing. So we did look at Miami Day, we looked at Texas Tech, we looked at NOVA to see what are these organizations doing. Um, and then we also have Purdue Global and WGU who are doing bachelor's degree in cloud. So that's really where we started. And then we started having the conversation. The first conversation, one of the first conversations we had was with Antonio Delgado. He presented to our faculty and members of our community to talk about the work that they had done in Miami with introducing cloud. So that's really where we started, is having this conversation, really leaning in, and then saying, okay, we really need to answer this and start partnering with employers and, of course, be involved with AWS. So that's the start. Yep. And can you talk a little bit about your, um, I don't know, legacy degree program that you used as the foundation for your program? And I love this story because to me it's sort of an analog for the industry of what you did. So we started with server administration. And um, I can tell you that there are a number of employer partners and C-suite people. When I talked to them last year about server administration, they were like, really? server administration, and it was like, hey, we have to start somewhere, right? And it was Brax. And so we really started from there to say, how do we, how do we cloudify that? How do we change that um, so we can start using that as a foundation? So that's what we did. And so we started cloudifying it, looked for, there was still relevant content, right? And because you still have to understand fundamentals of networking. You still have to understand, you know, some cyber. But we looked at server administration and said, let's cloudify it, let's get it there. And, you know, we had low enrollment in that program, low enrollment and low completion rates, because people were just not interested. And we had employer partners saying, what are you guys doing around cloud, right? So we, we, we took a hold of that program, started, you know, kind of introducing some cloud concepts, if you will, as I'm composing them here, but introducing some cloud concepts. And then we just said, okay, now let's just shift it. And so we shifted it, and now it's called Cloud Technologies. Awesome. And can you dig into this audience and give us a sense for what are the component parts of this program, um, and how did industry kind of inform its development? So for our Cloud Associates degree, which again was the evolution of, of server administration, a student can graduate with five different certifications, A+, plus, Net+, plus, Plus, Cloud Practitioner, and Solutions Architect. 
so five certifications. Plus we introduced them to VMware, Hyper-V, um, uh, networking, cybersecurity. Um, we're, we're getting to the place where we will start introducing some containerization and scripting, but it's, it's a journey, right? We'll get there. Um, we, I, I'll share with you, as soon as we introduced this to employer partners, they were like, what are you doing with Kubernetes? And I was like, okay, we need to take a deep cleansing breath just for a minute because we just got this, right? So, right, it's components of, really, of IT, what we call IT support, which is breaking down and understanding the components of a machine. Um, it's introducing that networking, so getting into cabling and all of that, and then also introducing cloud, as well as those, again, key components of cyber. And we're introducing some 21st century skills, um, as well as some gen ed courses, which we're required to do. Um, so that's what we're introducing, and we're looking at, the other thing we had to look at, and we're still looking at, is how do we introduce scripting, because right now, we have Python included, um, and a computer logic class included, but we need to think about it differently because smashing code for software development is different than smashing code from a cloud perspective, right? And so we're looking at how do we incorporate more of a scripting course, so we're gonna build a new course for that, um, as well as we're building a new secure coding course. So those are really the components, but with those five certifications, and that education that we're wrapping around it, it's a pretty powerful associate's degree. It really is, and that those five certifications are currency for that job. Yeah, absolutely. And so tell us, just kind of digging in on the employer piece, tell us more about how you wrangle employers, and this is where it gets really kind of interesting, because we all know employers need people, and we talked about, there was some discussion of this in the panel that preceded us, you know, in their protocol, they want to hire everyone who has 15 years of experience, right? Maybe they'll settle for five, but there's that chicken and egg where if you can't get hired without two to three years of experience, you can't get two to three years of experience without getting hired, and that's kind of the nut we need to crack. I think you all do a really nice job on kind of engaging employers early, so spend a minute on that, if you don't mind. So, um, you know, it's a conversation with employers. It, it really is, an, and now, you know, I'm just going to have to say this because you guys have been so, the AWS team has been so instrumental in helping us. They're just a group of Jedi's, I just tell you. But, um, you know, it's really just having a conversation to say, okay, this is what we're doing at Ivy Tech. You, you, you have to be willing to say this is what we're thinking about, and then you have to sit back and listen. And sometimes that's hard because as faculty and educators, you want to wax philosophical with them, and you want to make your decisions in a vacuum because you know what's best for your students, right? No, but you know, we need to get those students hired. So it really was, tell us what you need. And so some of the work that we did came out of Education Design Lab. We're one of six community colleges in that cohort with Education Design Lab, designing credentials for the new majority learner. And so we did some research into what employers want, looking at that T profile, if you've been through that exercise before, but then just really saying, Here's what we're presenting. This is how we're partnering with AWS. Help us understand what you need, what skills you're looking for. And it has been a lot of conversation, but we've been able to, I believe, start flipping that narrative that runs through that C-suite's brain of, I need the four-year person. Um, and that's where we're at. When big tech comes out, and this is where industry helps us, when big tech comes out to say, you don't need a four-year degree to kickstart or work in tech, that is significant, and we need more of that. We're really gonna pe put people in the workforce. But it really was listening, and that's the key. Um, and then talking with them to say, okay, here's this pathway we have. Here are the skills. I mean, and you have to write what we call course course outlines of record, as well as summarize what those skills are, and being able to sit down and go, okay, this is what we're doing. As an example, Rebecca, we're doing this with Infosys right now, is we're sharing all of our course outlines of record to say, these are the skills that we're teaching in these courses. What are we missing? And that's where, you know, Linda, we really think that we need to have more scripting, 
right? Um, Linda, you know, DevOps, DevOps, we had that. So we just had a DevOps professional day where we partnered with the DevOps Institute to give professional development to our faculty. So it's really having that conversation and having them inform us and let's go, okay, how do we incorporate this and when can we? Because it's not everything at once. Right, and that right there is the key. I think there's a couple things, but that was the key. So we've got a key right here. One is being agile enough to incorporate what you should, but maybe even, maybe that's two. One is understanding what are the universal skills that are gonna get these people to break into the market and what are the company specific skills which, you know, unless that single company is hiring 50, 100, 500 people, uh, it doesn't make sense to train just on those. Those can be developed post-hire. And it feels like that is the balance that you're always kind of looking for. Absolutely, and the other thing I'll add here too is, you know, we have now coming to the table um, Lily, and that's a big deal. Anthem, IU Health. IU Health is the second largest employer in the state of Indiana behind the state of Indiana. And we also have the state of Indiana at the table with us. So, you know, that's a big win for us because typically those companies don't look to the community college. They're very focused on the IU, Purdue, Rose, Ball State, and those institutions, but they they have really said, "Wow, Ivy Tech, you're really you're really serious about doing this." So that's a big win for us. That is huge, and I'm going to dig in on that for a second. So a lot of that is due to actions you have taken. So yes, those direct employer connections, but beyond that. Talk a little bit about the other stakeholders in the political sphere, and you know, for Indiana, you know, Department of Workforce Development, this could be a Department of Labor, you know, for others. Um, just how you sort of cultivated relationships that helped build awareness, support, leverage for you know, what it is that Ivy Tech and you are, are leading out on. So, you know, I can say this, and again, mentioning Miami Day, when we first started talking about cloud, um, I, I built a really good relationship with members of the Department of Workforce Development in the state of Indiana. And, you know, pre-COVID, went to meetings with them, just had virtual coffees just to say, what's on your mind? Just, I'm here to just talk to you. Instead of asking for something, I'm here to talk to you, and then I'm going to ask you. <laughs> but, um, you know, I had a conversation, and they said, we're going to do cloud, and so, you know, we know that the demand is huge. We know that in this COVID space that we're in now, it's grown exponentially. Like some companies have seen a 130% increase in cloud, in, in cloud adoption. And she said, the person I work with said, have you talked to Miami Day? Can we talk to them? And so I was like, we certainly can. So I sent a message to Antonio and said, Antonio, there it is. Antonio, can you talk with us? So it really was, hey, what is going to influence you? Because she had already heard, because of the great work that he does, about what's happening in Miami Day in Dolphins. And so it was partnering with her to say, what else do you need to understand? Do you need to understand what cloud is? No, I got that, Linda. Um, talking to the commissioner for the Department of Workforce Development to say, Fred, we're leaning in here because we want to put people to work. And we know this has to happen. Who do we need to talk to? And so I have a cadence set with him now. So I meet with him every other month, and we just talk. And when he was doing, I think recently, statewide tour, he was doing a statewide tour. And so I went to the AWS folks, and I said, hey, we put together some talking points. How can you augment that so we can provide this to them? As he's going around talking throughout the state, with economic development councils and mayors, that we have information for you so you can talk to so that's really critical to the success. We also have, and um, we are now a trainer for the Department of Corrections. And so how do we lean in with all of these state organizations, uh, the legislative body, we have interns that we've provided for them now. And then of course the state of Indiana and their Office of Technology. So it's really important to build those very strong relationships that influence policy and decisions because they're gonna say, hey, Ivy Tech's doing this, let's give them money, time to fund them and help them. Yep, and we see this happening. 
um, you know, every single day. So Dr. Feldman has her connections to each of these different bodies, and that has that is what is enabling the growth and ultimately will end up being a, you know, a success generator for these agencies who are starving for this talent themselves. I think we often forget the public sector when we're um, thinking about generating talent pipelines. We go straight to the you know, commercial companies, but there's a huge need and appetite in the public sector as well. Absolutely. So you just gave several best case examples of this kind of cross-sector collaboration. It doesn't always go swimmingly. Um, tell us a little bit about what can make it hard. What can make it hard? Well, first of all, you know, we have what we call in Indiana the Next Level Pathways, which is at the high school level. And so we created a cloud pathway for from high school to Ivy Tech. And, and the challenge there is, is dual credit, dual enrollment, and we need to educate faculty. And so that's a huge challenge for us. We're also lean. We're um, a community college. We're in a tough last couple of years in down enrollment. Um, you know, so we're very lean. And we have to train our faculty and get them credentialed. Um, so that's a challenge, plus I think the other challenge is how do we get the word out? Because if you build it, everybody thinks if you build it, they'll come. That's not necessarily the case. Um, because we're still trying to see some increase in enrollment for fall, because we offer it right now, cloud. Um, and so one of our challenges is, Number one, do a lot of people, if they drink the Kool-Aid, the tech is the place to get. So you don't have to work as an Uber driver and as Nordstrom to ride on the weekends, right? Um, you drink the Kool-Aid. Do you understand what cloud is? So we need to talk about cloud in terms of where do your photos go when you're using your phone, right? And so make it real. Um, and we need to do that and hit that out to everyone. And that's probably the largest challenge is we need to have strong, we do have strong relationships with community leaders. There's so many things to tackle right now. How do we get that word out to say, seriously, you can do this? And, and I want to add to that, Rebecca, that the other thing that's happening is, and you'll probably see this a lot, is you know, my alma mater, Butler University of Warren, my undergrad, says, come to us, and in six months, we'll make you a data analyst. So you have a lot of boot camps, and a lot of organizations out here right now, we're all talking. There's so much noise out here right now talking about what we can do for you in four months, we're gonna do this. And what we're starting to see, and there's research to show, we're starting to see where, you know, sometimes that's the, not, the promise is not being delivered on. So you have people that are shy. So I think one of the things we're gonna have to start doing a better job of is, this is a journey. You're not gonna be a cloud Jedi, when you first take your first couple of classes, this is a journey, it's gonna take you two to three years, but there's gonna be a job wait for you in apprenticeships, as we, as we heard earlier, that's gonna be critical to the success, success as well. Yeah, I think that's such an important point, is showing the kind of arc that people can take and the steps in a career and what it takes to break in uh, but then, really, what comes next? And Ivy Tech's role, really, in supporting along each step of the way. Um, and that has taken a lot of education, and we've done a lot of that together, and we'll continue to do more of that uh, as well. So I want to shift gears a little bit. I think we've been talking a lot about the role of cloud education and community colleges when it comes to really supporting innovation for companies, public and private sector, and you know, economic development. But this is equally about diversity, equity, and inclusion. So following up on my theme from earlier, I'm going to drop some more data on you. This is from the uh, US Census Bureau. So we know that 68% of the American public lack a bachelor's degree. And that increases to 78% for black Americans and 84% for Hispanic Americans. Uh, so there are, you think about this, lots of impacts to that reality. It is shutting potentially strong candidates out of job opportunities where those companies are saying and those jobs require for you know, a four-year degree. Uh, and on the flip side, companies are limiting their access to potentially strong and diverse talent pools. And it's kind of an interesting conundrum given that the tide has 
sort of shifted in that many, many companies are now starting to recognize the value of a diverse workforce um, and how that can strengthen them, you know, their position in the market. There is an economic benefit to this. It's not just about you know, saying nice things or you know, having a good heart. Those are great, but there is actually a, you know, a, a value to this in economic terms as well. Um, so what I would love to do is have you talk just a little bit about how you see the role of community college um, in diversity, you know, when it comes in supporting diversity when it comes to IT when it comes to cloud. So, you know, first I think because we are open access institutions, community colleges are. That's one. That that's a plus um, for us is to have that open door. Um, our role because we get students, we understand where they're at. Um, you know, we have students that um, are challenged with food insecurity. We have students that are challenged just getting to class. Um, we have a lot of challenges, but we understand our student population. That's the great thing about the community college is that we've had to curate this knowledge of the student and meeting them where they're at, no matter who, no matter who they are. But I think, you know, for us, we have phenomenal opportunity to say, look, come and start this journey with us as, a, as an organization. We're going to give you the skills to get in the workforce. Now, are you going to come to Ivy Tech so you can wax philosophical about the ethics of AI? You may, right? But that's going to be on your journey later. What we are focused on right now is getting you to work. So this is where I think we partner with those community organizations, faith-based organizations, and others to say, we can put people to work which satisfies that need for talent, right? Um, so I think we have this really unique opportunity. And I always say to some of my employer partners that really know Linda Calvin, that if you have a diversity hiring strategy and you're not talking to me, then you're not talking to the right person. Um, if you're going back to the traditional institutions, which I'm, we're all a part of, and you're not talking to me, then how strong is your diversity strategy? So, you know, we need to understand and help say, okay, we can get this started, but we can also, can also provide these groups. So, let me share as an example. We have a women's organization at one of our campuses called Ivy Works. It's specifically targeted at women in IT. So on one side, we flank them with Pass the Torch for Women Mentors. On the other side, we flank them with, hey, you need assistance to buy books, uh, last dollar in um, for financial aid, um, yeah. gas cards, child care, you know, your lights got turned off. So we have these services that you can, those students can take advantage of, plus we're providing mentoring and professional development and exposing women to tech. And so that's the great role that we play, is that we can focus in and build this up and then say, okay, employer partners, come and talk to us. I have one in Noblesville, SMC, and they've hired so far two women and they want to do micro internships or sprint internships with us. And they keep coming to us for, hey, we want female candidates. And in fact, I would say, at least twice a week on LinkedIn, somebody's reached out to me going, can you introduce me to female candidates or students of color? Because that's the other work that we have to do, and that is establishing brand and talking about it on a regular basis when you're in the situation to say, come and talk to me about your talent. So a little plug, if you're not following Dr. Calvin on LinkedIn, you should. She's prolific um, and has lots of interesting things to share. Um, so keep up with her there. So it sounds like what you are saying is, you know, within the community college, and using Ivy Tech as an example, you are supporting people from all different walks of life by connecting them with whatever it is that you know, the gaps are that they're experiencing. And then you're connecting and layering on this absolutely industry-aligned training that maps to what companies are saying they need. Exactly. That is kind of the role in increasing the diverse talent pipeline. So that makes a ton of sense. Would love to hear you summarize um, or kind of give advice to the opposite side of the equation. So when you're talking to hiring companies who may maintain more of a traditional outlook around the value of the four-year degree, you know, we've done it this way, we've always done it this way, it's worked pretty well, we get good candidates. Um, can you sort of talk about how you would approach that um, in order to help others in the audience who might be having these types of conversations? 
So I would say first, we've always done this way, or the, what is it, the six words of the dying corporation. <laughs> so, um, you know, here's what I would offer, is let's talk. Let's, you know, you have to be innovative and think outside the box these days. So let's have a conversation about the skills we need, right? Um, and then let us talk to you about our programs. Lean in to understand more. Ask us all the questions that you want um, about what we're teaching. Um, help us understand what your strategy is, right? What is your diversity strategy? What do you want to accomplish? Um, and then have an open mind when it comes to the hiring. We can, we, ours is a continuous journey, so our cloud program, we have three credentials, they stack, um, so we can continue giving that person and exposing that person to education all the way through the associate's degree. And then we have relationships with, and we have this conversation with IU Health, we have relationships with um, an articulation and transfer agreements with our four-year universities. And so there are programs to fund that educational pathway if the four-year is something you just can't get around. But honestly, I think it's hokum to say we can't get around the four-year degree anymore. I'm a journalism undergrad with a Juris Doctor. I mean, <laughs> come on. Right. Put it aside. <laughs> right. <laughs> Is it okay? Um, all right, so I want to kind of dig into this whole concept of engaging employers early. And I think it's very connected to what you were just talking about. Um, we have seen it more and more be one of the keys, back to the keys here, um, that helps impact and evolve, um, push forward the mindset of employers who are looking for this type of talent that they you know, can't find anywhere. Um, and so you know, the key here is, is work-based learning. And that has traditionally meant apprenticeships, internships. Those are awesome. But there's also just this idea of getting more content into the classroom that comes from industry versus just you know coming from the academic side. Right. Um, and it feels like that's an area that you all are doing a lot in. So can you just talk about your approach to work-based learning, where it is, where you want to take it, um, you know, what's hard, what's going well? So, you know, first, and what we've been working on together is how do we identify projects that have already been accomplished at these employers and put that into our uh, process for capstones. So, um, you know, and then have the employer come and engage and say, oh, wow, that was a very creative way to solve that problem. We solved it this way, good luck. You know, so number one, how do we curate those types of projects and put them into a database to where we can start assigning those to students. That gives experience. The other thing that we have, and it's a brand new function, it's called Career Coaching and Employer Connections. It's brand new, we just launched in 2020. And from the day that person hits Ivy Tech, they start educating them, what's your LinkedIn resume, and identifying opportunities for them to get work and, and work and earn opportunities. So Infosys is a prime example of a company we're working with. Um, but also those sprint internships or micro internships or other ways that we've been able to partner with employers to say, you know, here's the thing, we hear from you that you want a junior cloud developer with seven years experience. Come on, junior cloud developer, seven years experience. <laughs> you know, but how about this? How about we figure out a way to have them come in for a spread, or they do an internship, or they do an apprenticeship with you to get that and to get that experience, or give us capstones or projects that you'd like students to work on. Yep. And I have a little bit of a rough analogy here, but I like to say a lot of times in education, you know, we were producing bologna sandwiches or what have you, and companies, you know, they wanted hamburger and jelly, but we didn't ask them until after all the bologna sandwiches were out and nobody was buying them. And so then you bring them in early, you ask them what they're hungry for, and then you engage them to help actually build that. They're going to be much more, you know, prone to want to hire those people, give them internships, give them apprenticeships, etc. That's right. If you come to us, we have a buffet. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. So we have not too much time left. I'm going to kind of wrap up and then open for questions. We'd love to hear um, from you all. So. The kind of key points here, and I'm going to leave it to Dr. Calvin um, after I summarize here. You know, four-year degrees have been around for a long time. They absolutely have a place, um, but they have served as a proxy for kind of employability, um, and that's not always necessary, right? So this shifting focus to skills-based hiring uh, fits really well with IT and with cloud. 
and that early alignment between employers and involvement, um, bringing them in into the fold when it comes to how you're going to design, where you're going to design, um, you know, what are the kind of guts of these academic programs, and whether they're for credit or actually whether they're workforce programs in both cases um, is actually pretty critical. Um, and all of that sort of converging into this moment where there is an opening for community colleges to play the lead. So, Dr. Calvin, two questions. Um, <laughs> she's been born. Uh, so, what should community colleges do to leverage this moment in time? And then, what should employers do um, same, to kind of make the most of this opportunity that we're faced with? Community colleges, what we need to do right now is we need to be very bold and start having conversations and not waiting for someone to find us. We have to dispel the myth that we are the place of last resort. We're not the place of last resort. We need to set ourselves up that we are here to answer workforce demand. We are here to answer what Lily needs, what Genesis needs, what IU Health needs. We're here to answer that and then you can use tuition assistance to continue that learning journey. So that's what we have to do right now is talk about what we do and what we can provide. We have to make sure that we're building very strong relationships with AWS and Apple and Salesforce and figure out how we can partner together to, to support the exponential growth that we have going on, right? Um, we have to understand more about AI. We need to be talking with you about that. Then I think what employers need to do is really, I think, get very, very serious about the statements that made last year about racial justice, the statements made about diversity and hiring, number one. I think employers need to say, how are we going to do this? Are we going to be able to source all of our diverse talent from Purdue? No offense against Purdue. I am an I. But, you know, um, are you going to be able to do that? No, you're not, right? So get serious and have a conversation with us. And then I think the other things employers need to do is just like tech has evolved, so do your standards for how you have to hire. We're not, you know, looking for that computer science only person anymore. Matter of fact, most of the Jedi's I know were poli sci or English lit or theology majors that got a job on a health desk and became a Jedi because they needed to pay their rent. Right? We need to we need to go back to embracing that. Um, so I think those are two things. The other thing I want to add here is, as all of us can do, is demystify computer science. Everybody talks about it. Science. I call it tech education when you can get a degree in computer science because you're not doing enough to attract more talent to the pipelines if you're only going to um, package it as the thing that you want, big bang theory, right? So completely and totally changing the narrative is what the work that we all have to do. Awesome. Thank you. Um, would love to take any questions that folks out there might have for Dr. Calvin or for you. as well um, to have that conversation and to have courses with students. Um, we have a lot of students that do want to stay in their communities. They do. They want to stay in Salisbury. Not, you know, people think, well, you want to leave the small town, right? It's like a lot of people don't. They like their small towns where they grew up. And so um, we are reaching out to those students to say, here's this opportunity for you to learn. We have had a few remote internships, but again, that came up in the last session is we don't have, we need more of those from, from industry. We need more thinking along those lines of the remote internship. So it started with us, but we still have more to do. Yeah, but she was there last 
I got my start as a AWS military apprentice. So programs like this is what got me here today. Um, I had a marketing degree, it wasn't technical at all, and everyone was like, oh, you can go, it's like sales and marketing. So that's just, it's, I don't know if it's a good question, I'm just curious, like, like an entry level, like, to make the cloud less daunting, like I think sales is another section that uh, would be appealing to like, a different group of students or just individuals who know how to you know, obviously do that piece and just obviously you're selling it and you have to understand that at a certain level as well. So that's one area that's really interesting to me. And then, um, yeah, same thing. Before that, I was, I was driving Uber, like you said, and then it came into to the cloud. So it's, it's a crazy journey, but uh, I was supportive of the nation. So. Um, what I have to say is, you know, the one thing we are doing and we are actually starting to engage with um, some com consulting companies to do a tech sales credential where we're going to marry that marketing and business and the tech. We're, we're just in the initial stages now, but we have a lot of excitement around that. So you're exactly right, and I think that what we continue to do is demystify tech, right? To where, uh, I will share this with you, I went to a foundation recently for entrepreneurs, and they said the first thing that we do is we do discovery week where we teach people confidence. And I was like, that is brilliant. And that's what we need to do, I think, is start there and say, okay, this is what tech is, right? And hey, AWS and Apple, how do you want to how do you want to partner with us? This is what tech is, and this is how you can be confident. Because a lot of times I think people are scared that tech's too Star Trekian or Star Warsian for them to do. And they all think it's smashing code, you know, um, uh, I come from a cobalt background and I'm dating myself, but you know, everyone thinks it's this really hard thing. They've seen all the shows, Big Bang Theory, and all these shows which seems weird. And so I think the work that we have to do, to your point, is imbue those people with the confidence to say, you can do this. If you right now are working at your local grocery store, which is fine, you can you can map your passion to tech. And you can pull it off and do it. There's going to be some times when it's not always easy, but you know the benefits are substantial, right? Because the pay for tech is is awesome. So I I, I love what you said, and you're going to work on that, taking that person that has those marketing skills and saying, hey, you can come into an entry level place, and especially with cloud, you can right through our technical certificate, which is um, a starter. Um, but absolutely. We are at time. Oh, do, you, do you want to ask a question before we get kicked off? <laughs>
Uh, there's Blacks in Technology, which is a big group. There's Blacks in Cybersecurity. Um, there's Black Girls Code, Brown Girls Code. There's Latinas in Tech. Um, you know, there's the Society for Hispanic Engineers. Um, so there are so many groups out there nationally that if you don't have something locally, lean into the national group. Say, this is what we're looking at. Here's our strategy. How can we partner and help us? Because these groups want to. They seriously want to partner with, with employers to help get those people into jobs. So I would definitely do that. I would also look if you have like faith-based organizations in your, in your um, neighborhoods or in your communities that work in the space. There's one in Indiana called Shepherd Community Center. We're also talking about New Corinthian and Eastern Star. So look for those faith-based organizations that are trying to lean in and do the workforce development as well. And then start working with high schools. Um, that's really critical to start working with high schools to say, how can we fund camps? We love camps. How can we fund camps? How can we have them come on, come on site um, and visit us so we can talk about it? And then lastly, what I would strongly suggest is if you haven't looked at a community college, you know, and we have 19 campuses and, and 23 locations in the state of Indiana, um, and several of our campuses, at least one in Indianapolis, is majority minority. So um, I would say, and a lot of those community colleges will have some kind of organization. So connect with someone um, in at a community college or colleges, um, and you can also look at coding boot camps. So you know, I'm always going to advocate for us versus a coding boot camp. Okay, but there are some coding boot camps that are really taking people who are already in the workforce, maybe, that are coming in to earn more skills, and they also have talent pipelines that are trying to lean into this space. So I hope that kind of helps you get a, a start. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to have a conversation um, with you at any time. And I think there's a short term and a long term to that. So in the short, in the long term, the play really is get to lower down, get into high schools, get into middle schools, and. So from an AWS perspective, and we're doing this you know, with Indiana and, and through Ivy Tech, we're doing this in multiple states and you know, regions of the globe, we're providing the training for the educators, because that's the first you know, huge obstacle, and then we're providing the curriculum, and we're just creating awareness of this is a career path, and it's awesome. Because people, people don't know, um, the students or the educators, and what that does is just kind of exponentially increase the number of students who then hit the community colleges and want to continue their studies and kind of obtain those qualifications that make them really competitive for those hiring jobs, right? So that's, that's a long-term play that's not gonna get you talent in the door tomorrow, um, but I think you know, the more you can partner with community colleges, particularly in areas where industry like AWS is partnering, um, you know, that is going to be a really fertile ground. And yes. when we have agencies and companies who are uh, nervous about that because it's just a huge change. We have created uh, situations where sort of try before you buy or you know, guarantees where you, you hire 10 people or you know, whatever the numbers are um, and you have them sort of try out working for you for six months. If it doesn't work out, you tell us what is missing. Um, so we will partner with you to help um, really learn from that process so that we can get you the type of talent that your agency feels really good about bringing on board. And you know, you can also just take the Take the chance, say, we've got to get creative. Okay, we're really going to do this. And I'll share with you, there's a cybersecurity company in Indiana um, growing exponentially, it's called Ponderance. And um, we have uh, someone there that said, I love hiring community college students because I build loyalty. Because, you know, we're starting to see that pendulum shift back to where you hung out for two years and then you bolted. That's changing now because employers are saying, man, that's not working for us. Um, so, what you can do is say, we're just going to go out here and we're going to put in our pipeline to hire three students from a community college program and do an internship with this many, right? Or even a micro internship, a sprint internship, right? So, just build that plan in and start, you know, growing and promoting that into, um, you know, into your communities that this exists because you're going to impart wisdom 
that people need, right? That students need to learn. So I think it's just, you know, step out, take that leap of faith, craft. There are so many Jedis that are working in community colleges right now. And what Rebecca said is true. If you see AWS working there, that's an opportunity to say, okay, AWS, what are you doing? How do I partner with you? And I just have for my day or Nova or Texas Tech or, what, or wherever we're at. So I would say design that and then try the apprenticeship model to get those skills as well. It does work. I know tech's kind of like apprenticeship, <laughs> but you know, it's really a thing and it does work and it will give people experience that they need. Um, and you know, you're going to find some brand loyalty, you know, some loyalty there where you're going to get to grow that employee. Um, and teach them the ways of your force. I love Star Wars and Star, so you're getting a lot of the sci-fi. <laughs> yeah, that's always coming. So we want to thank you all. Um, please remember to complete the session survey. We'd love to hear about your experience. We could sit here and talk all day, but I feel like that might be discouraged. So um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.